Hello everyone, we begin the video lesson series on econometrics. In this video, I will cover introduction and methodology of econometrics. By the end of this lesson, you will understand the steps used in econometric modeling. Econometrics literally means economic measurement. It is the metrics part of the name that means measurement. Econometrics is the application of mathematics and statistics with economic theory to explain economic phenomena. If we want a more formal definition of econometrics, then we will consider one given by Arthur in 1964, who defined econometrics as a social science in which the tools of economic theory, mathematics, and statistical inference are applied to the analysis of economic phenomena. We begin with the traditional or the classical methodology of econometrics. The first step in this classical methodology is the statement of theory or hypothesis. You are familiar with the infamous law of demand, which states that quantity demanded is negatively related to price, ceteris paribus. Now in economics, we know that ceteris paribus is the Latin meaning of all things being equal or all other factors held constant. We also have consumption theory which states that consumption is positively related to income. So these are some of the theories that you can state as the first step in the classical methodology of econometrics. After identifying a theory, you move on to the next step, which happens to be specification of mathematical model. So if we take into consideration the consumption theory, where we have just stated that consumption is positively related to income, then we can formulate the mathematical model as C equals A plus BY, where C is consumption expenditure, Y is income, A and B are called parameters, which represent the intercept and slope respectively. And in the consumption theory, A is known as autonomous consumption, which happens to be that part of consumption that does not depend on income and B is the marginal propensity to consume, MPC for short. After specifying the mathematical model, you go ahead and specify the econometric model. So for example, we specify an econometric model of this form, Y equals beta one plus beta two X plus U. If we compare this econometric model with the mathematical model that we stated earlier, then the Y in the econometric model represents consumption in the mathematical model. The beta one and the beta two represents the A and B, which was specified in the consumption function. And X in the econometric model represents income in the consumption function. Now we also have another term, U, which you can see in the econometric model. This is known as unobserved factors. These are other factors that can also affect consumption, but are not included in the model and they include the size of the family, employment level, and others. After specifying the econometric model, you go ahead and obtain the data. So data can be obtained from several databases or from any other relevant source. For example, in my country, data can be obtained from the body that conducts census, which happens to be the Ghana Statistical Service. Another way you can also obtain data is to go to the field yourself by issuing questionnaires or conducting interviews and gathering primary data for econometric modeling. So after you have obtained the data, you go ahead and estimate the econometric model. So in which case, if this is the econometric model as we have seen earlier, then we use the data we obtain from whatever database to estimate the parameters beta one and beta two. So assuming we have beta one to be 18.57 and beta two to be 4.96, then we can go ahead and substitute these values into the econometric model and we end up getting the estimated model. You have to keep in mind that this model we are working with is now the consumption function, which has just been transformed into an econometric model. So the Y is consumption and the X is income. After estimating the parameters in the econometric model, you go ahead and conduct hypothesis testing. This is normally done to test for significance of the parameters which you have estimated. So in the model that we have just assumed to be estimated, you want to ask yourself, 
is beta 1 significant? Is beta 2 significant? In order to answer these questions, you have to formulate the hypothesis and test for it. So your null hypothesis will say that the parameter is not significant, whereas the alternative hypothesis states that it is significant. So if you gather enough evidence and reject the null hypothesis, then you can conclude that the parameters which you have estimated are significant. Once significance of these parameters is established, you go ahead and use it for forecasting and prediction. So in the econometric model, which we have assumed to be estimated earlier, if the value of income is 100, we can go ahead and substitute this into the econometric model and we obtain 514.57. If income is 150, we can also substitute likewise and we get the answer to be 762.57. So in the end, given a certain level of income, you can go ahead and predict or forecast the level of consumption based on this econometric model, which you have estimated. After the econometric model has gone through the forecasting and prediction, we go to the next step, which happens to be to use the model for control or policy purposes. So for example, a government might ask what level of income will keep consumption expenditure at a certain level. So if the aim of the government is to keep consumption expenditure at a certain level and wish to decide how much income to be in the economy, then they can use that model and formulate a policy in order to control the level of income that happens to be in the economy. And the government can do so using the fiscal policy where they adopt the tools of taxation and government expenditure to affect economic situations in the country or they might happen to conduct monetary policy through the central bank in order to affect money supply, which also goes ahead to affect the level of income in the economy. So in the end, we just simply use that model for policy purposes. So let us give the summary of the methodology of econometrics. So the methodology of econometrics from the classical or traditional perspective, you have to state an economic theory. After stating the economic theory, then you specify the mathematical model of that theory. Then you go ahead and specify the econometric model of the theory. You obtain the data, and then you use that data to estimate the econometric model. After that, you can use the model which you have estimated and test for the significance of the parameters in that model. Then you can use it for forecasting or prediction. And after going through this process, you can now use it for control or policy purposes. In the next lesson, we will discuss the nature of regression analysis.